Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, editor of Cabot Market Letter and Cabot Top 10 Report, and I'm here with a special Cabot Chart School presentation. And our goal over the next few minutes is not just to give some good stocks a good buy points, but also provide you with some chart reading tactics that you can take with you for many future market cycles. Okay, let's just start off looking at the type of charts we're going to be examining. And I also want to throw out one big caveat before we really get started. In terms of the type of charts, this should be no surprise if you've been following our weekly uh, videos. We look at daily charts, we look at weekly charts. Here, here's a daily chart of BMW. Okay, every day worth of trading is just one bar. Every day's worth of volume is one bar. Blue is up. Red or pink means the stock closed down. And the moving averages we generally use on a daily chart, the thin red one's going to be the 25-day moving average. Shorter term uh, comes into play with more strongly trending stocks. The important one is the black one, the 50-day moving average. And then we usually throw in the long-term 200-day moving average, this green one, just as sort of a background indicator. Daily charts, obviously very key when you're, when you're doing chart analysis, usually about 9 to 12 months in length of, you know, of data. Just realize they can be a little noisy, okay? You can't overreact to every reversal or, or reversal of reversal or big volume day. They're a little noisy, but obviously they're key. A little less noise occurs on the weekly chart here. Same stock, BMW, this is VMware. You're usually getting about four to five years of data on a weekly chart, depending on, again, you know, how, how long the chart's going to be. Same concept, every bar is going to be one week's worth of trading. Every bar down here is one week's worth of volume. And instead of, you know, a 50-day, you're going to have a 10-week moving average. That's this thin black line. And instead of a 200-day, you're going to have a 40-week moving average. Again, same concept. Um, the one caveat I wanted to throw out here before we really get started is that all the stocks I'm going to talk about have been, quote-unquote, pre-screened. I mean, we like to look for leading stocks, great sales and earnings growth, unique products, and importantly, some institutional sponsorship. You can't just take a chart tactic like we're going to talk about some of these and just apply it to a thin $2 stock or apply it to Coca-Cola, you know, which isn't growing fast and can't move more than 10% uh, without taking a breather. You know, you want to combine the fundamentals with the technicals. But just for this presentation, we'll just be talking technicals. But realize all the stocks are really in the leadership group, at least right now. So the first tactic is very straightforward. It's just a lot of days up in a row. What's a lot? It's usually something like eight days up in a row or more. So let's take a look at Acme Packet, APKT. Okay, the stock's been sort of grinding higher during the correction. And now that the pressure has come off the market, you see the stock, I believe it was eight days up in a row here. And I think over, overall it was 12 out of 14 or 12 out of 15 days up. Those sort of ratios, you know, 8 in a row, 9 in a row, 10 in a row, or 12 out of 15, that sort of thing, that just shows you some persistent accumulation. Does it mean the stock is a good buy as soon as you see that? No, not necessarily. Usually the stock can pull back at some point or chop around as we're kind of seeing Acme Packet do here. But because there's persistent accumulation going on and because that accumulation doesn't just tend to go away anytime soon, usually the first pullback or consolidation can be viable. Okay, an example in the recent past here was Salesforce.com. After the market's a late June low, you can kind of see the stock had a bunch of up days in a row here. It only had a two down days really until the end of July, almost the end of July. Okay, so there's only two down days for most of July. Again, that was persistent accumulation. Now the stock did go higher, but again, you know, it did pull back before ramping up on earnings and you know, with the market getting better. So just one thing to look for on your weekend research and whenever you're doing it are just some stocks that are already on your watch list that have cranked up 8, 9, 10 days in a row. You know, another example, just going back even further, this is Las Vegas Sands. Okay, back here in February and March when the market was getting going after its January correction, right here it had 12 days up in a row. Okay, and that was sort of the kickoff to its breakout, and obviously it's been choppy, but it's, it's been a successful one during the past few months. So a lot of up days in a row, definitely something to watch. On the other end of the spectrum, which these are harder to find, you want to look for a stock that's generally strong, that's been consolidating for a few weeks or months, that then puts in a very, very, very quiet day. What does that mean? It might be the tightest range day it's had over the past month or two or three, combined with a very low amount of volume traded that day. It just tells you what, what this is a sign of is that all the weak hands are out. The eye has come off the stock. The strong hands are in control. Is it a conclusive buy signal? Not necessarily, but it should definitely get your antenna up. Here's Baidu right here. Just last Friday, okay, I can't say the range was super small. It was very small relative to its recent uh, price ranges. But down here, I don't know if you can see this. 
Okay, last Friday, the volume, as far as we know, I think it was the lowest in two or three years. Um, don't quote us, but it was it's definitely the lowest this year, many months, if not years. Just a sign that there's no more selling coming into the stock. Okay, and that, again, it's not an outright buy signal right there. You should definitely have your antenna up because a lot of these stocks, the leading stocks even, they will play possum. They will get very tight. No one's watching them, and all of a sudden they explode higher. And, of course, once they explode higher, people say, hey, you know, what? I, what's going on with the stock? But if you can really, you know, just take an eye for it, look for the low volume, okay, it can give you a, a heads up to a potential up move. Just on this same chart, Baidu, okay, back here, it tightened up beautifully even after this huge run. You can see it had a couple of very tight days here before it kind of got going. And even earlier, this red day, again, they're hard to see because they're tight, low volume days and there's not much going on. Even after the huge earnings gap, this stock had another one of these days back in February. Okay, this was actually before the market really got going. Very tight, it was down a little bit, almost didn't move the whole day, almost no volume. And of course, that was a great time to initiate a position or maybe you know buy some more if you already own some. Okay, so just keep an eye out for those things. Okay, it's harder to find, but if you're doing your weekend research and you're just flipping through a bunch of charts, tight ranges, very low volume, especially in a stock that's been consolidating, Baidu here has basically been in a well, we, you know, a base on top of a base here for the past few months. Could be a sign that all the sellers are worn out. Okay, the third tactic is no surprise if you've been following us. It's just big volume clues. Okay, bunch of big volume clues. This is CB Richard Ellis, especially all within a few days. Usually tells you that any pullback in the next, you know, couple of weeks will be viable in that range. Let me let me explain that again. CB Richard Ellis, okay, this is a nice base. It's actually kind of a cup with handle base, okay? But more importantly is as soon as the market got going, it had, you know, a few days in a row, oops, excuse me, a few days in a row here of nice volume. It pushed from 16 to 18, just right in a line. Now it's consolidating a little bit. Because of this volume, that tells you there was a lot of institutions accumulating shares in this price zone. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, five months from now, if it comes back in this price zone, they'll be accumulating it. But it does tell you in the short term, the next couple of weeks, if, say, CB Richard Ellis pulled back below 18, there's probably going to be a lot of people here who did not get their full position on. You know, they might have wanted to buy uh, 500,000 shares and they were able to buy 150,000. Or, you know, I'm just making up numbers. So that just tells you that if you do get a pullback, you can kind of, you know, you don't have to use the 50-day as a support level necessarily. You can kind of use this area of 17 to 18 thinking, hey, a lot of people were buying it. They probably didn't get their full position. And if the market stays healthy, of course, any pullback into this range should be viable. Another example would be Netflix. This, this chart's a little squished, but again, you've got some big volume clues down here, a few days up in a row, and it just shot ahead as soon as the market um, got going. So, you know, you might look at this and say, wow, this is really extended, and it is. Okay, it probably can pull back, but, you know, to me, anything in this 130 to 140 range is going to be very strong support because I have a hard time believing all the institutions got their position after, you know, what was really a multi-week basing period and it just got going, okay? Um, another example, well, I wanted to bring up this example, Riverbed, RVBD. The only caveat here is you have to know where you are in terms of the stock and the moving averages. So, you know, Riverbed had this one, great volume clue. Here's another big volume clue. Here's another big volume clue this week. I can't, it's so far extended, I can't say that necessarily there's going to be great support just within this day's range, you know, if the market gets a little rough, you know, this could pull back further because it's had a great run. It's pretty extended. But in general, if you do get a cluster of big volume days, you're usually going to find support in that area in the short term, assuming the market remains healthy. The last thing I want to touch on, it's not really a tactic. It's more of just a keeping your eye open for something on the weekly chart. Okay, this is especially important if any of you do weekend research. On the weekly chart, you know, a lot of stocks will have big drops, and then rally toward the end of the week. And most people just, you know, they might dive on earnings, for instance, but then by the end of the week, they'll make up most of the ground. And most people just sort of write it off. Oh, that stock got killed on earnings, and it's just bouncing back. But there's been a lot of stocks lately that, you know, if you really pay attention, they are finding major support by the end of the week. And that can be a clue that, you know, it could be near a low. Here's Am Let me show you some examples. Amazon.com actually dove on earnings. Let me make this chart a little bit bigger for you. It dove on earnings here, but it, it ended up rallying that day and found support right here, okay? And this is a huge volume stick during the week. And that's really a sign, especially after a, you know, multi-month decline, 
of major institutional support. And sure enough, the stock kind of tightened up in here during the August decline and the stock's you know, kind of back toward its old high now. Okay, another example here would be C-Trip, which fell hard. I believe this was because uh, they might have had to cut their rates or something. There was some rumor going around. Okay, it had a bad week. It had another bad week, but this week right here, it dove below support. It undercut prior lows. Look at the volume stick here. Huge volume. I think it was its biggest weekly volume ever, but the stock closed above its 200-day. It closed near the top of its range. Okay, and then it, you know, obviously it held those gains, so to speak, in the weeks ahead, and now it's sort of setting up for a breakout. Okay, this is a type of thing where if you see this, I'm not saying it's a buy signal, but a lot of people just take it off their watch list. They ignore it. It's totally gone. Well, if you see this sort of reversal and then you see the stock hold in there and you you know you know the story, it's a great story, sometimes you can buy a little bit in that scenario. A very recent example here was Lulu. Okay, this stock really was fading. Okay, any chart watcher would have sold this thing probably in the high 30s, okay, especially with a weak market. It dove here, but just notice then, again, you know, this bottom week, it was way down. It closed near its high. It was down for the week, but just barely on big volume. And then what happened last week? The company reported great earnings. The stock gaps up even more, okay, on even heavier volume. And now it's having another good week for the first couple days. So, you know, that sort of action is probably telling you that all the weak hands have been washed out. It's a more violent move than, say, finding a tight area. But all the weekends have been washed out, and now it's just the stock is ready to, to mushroom higher. Okay. This one isn't quite the example, but, you know, Power One, again, this is just an example of using price volume on the weekly chart. Very strong stock, volatile. Um, I won't say it's speculative. Great sales and earnings growth, but, you know, it's, it's going to be choppy. Okay, the stock had a big run, and then, boom, three days in a row of heavy weekly selling right here right down to the 10-week line, you're kind of wondering, you know, is this stock too much? Well, then the next two weeks, the stock has uh, support on even bigger volume. I know it's a little hard to see there, but take my word for it. Volume on these two weeks was up about 15 to 20% over the prior three weeks. Just another sign that institutions are kind of supporting shares here around the 10-week line. Long story short, there's a lot of ways with price volume that you can kind of put the odds more in your favor in terms of entry points and, of course, eventually exit points as the market rally falters and the stocks falter. Um, and if you can just add a few of these to your repertoire, I'm sure your portfolio's results will take a big boost. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Come by again this weekend for the regularly scheduled Capit Weekly Review. Thank you very much.